Gokarna Matha is one of the Gud Saraswat Mathas of the Dvaita order, a system established by Jagadguru Madhvacharya in the 13th century AD. This Matha is also called Padagali Jivotama and is headquartered in Padagali, a small town in South Goa, on the banks of the river Kushavati. There is still ongoing research to establish who exactly founded the Matha and when exactly it was founded. As per historic lore it is said that it was initiated by Sri Raghothama Theotaru of Uttaradi Matha. It is said that this matha was formed after it split away from Palamar at Udupi initiated by Shamad Ananda Theotaru The first pontiff of the matha was Narajanatitha. Sri Narayana Theotaru was a great scholar of the Dvaita order and earned the name, Sri Pada Wadayaru, for which he is still known today. The math became well known as Jivotama Matha after the third pontiff, Jivotama Titha. The deity worshipped by the institution is Ramdev Virvithal. During the late 1950s, Sri Dwarakanatha Theotaru established several educational institutions and republished several seminal works. This math was also a victim of Portuguese Christian missionary activities that drove the original establishment from Majau to Batkal in Karnataka and Karwar district in Karnataka. History In the true sense, establishment of Sri Mutt renowned as the Sri Samsthan Gokhan Padagali Jivotam Mutt coincidentally took place in the Himalayas at Badrikashram on Chari Trishukla II, Saka 1397 Sri Madhvacharya had established Ashtamadas eight Mutts at Udupi to disseminate the Dvaita philosophy of the Mudva sect. Of these eight, one was the Falamaru Mutt. The Saraswat community spread along the western coast of India, following the philosophy of the Vaishnava sect had accepted the spiritual guidance of this Falamaru Mutt. The tenth Acharya of the Falamaru Mu Sri Ramchandra Tirth, while on a pilgrimage to the Himalayas accompanied by his entourage, was taken seriously ill. The place being inaccessible and remote from Udupi, it was not possible to establish any contact with the headquarters of the Mutt at Udupi. Fearing that the lineage of the Acharyas of the Mutt may be severed in case he breathes his last at the feet of Lord Narayan, and the tradition of the Mutt would be curtailed, as an alternative arrangement he ritually conferred the discipleship on an eligible Saraswat Brahmachari celibate bachelor. Having thus initiated him into the Mutt tradition by giving Diksha and having bestowed the name of Sri Narayan Tirth on him, the Guruswami advised him to return to Udupi after duly completing his pilgrimage. After being duly initiated into renunciation, Sri Narayan Tirth resolved to complete his pilgrimage to the sacred spots and shrines of North India. Thus moving from places of pilgrimage such as Kurukshetra and Brahmavada to Brahmaruta, he finally arrived at the world-renowned pilgrim center of Varanasi. This ancient land of Vaishnavas is considered as the abode of rest of Lord Madhava. The holy month of Kartik had drawn near and the Swamiji was aware of the extraordinary significance of the sacred dip at the Panchaganga Ghat at this auspicious time. In fact, it has been mentioned in the Ramayana that Lord Ram had made a year-long sojourn at Varanasi on the way to his Vandavas disbandment. It so happened that, during the very month of Kartik, the princess of Kashi Varanasi, along with her companions arrived at the Ghat for the Gangasnan holy bath. As had been her practice, she kept her ornaments on the bank over the clothes and dipped into the water. But due to the extreme cold, she began to shiver and quickly rushing for dry clothes on the shore and pulled them on. Having completed their bath, as the entire troop was about to return to the palace, it was discovered that the diamond-studded bangle of the princess was lost. But where could it go? Who could have dared to steal the bangle of the princess? An intense search was launched but to no avail. An hermit was seen engaged in Japa Anushtan ritual of chant worship at one corner of the Ghat. Many had seen this alien sannyasin ascetic there. Although there was a hue and cry over the lost ornament of the princess, it had not disturbed the concentration of the hermit engrossed in his worship. However, the soldiers disturbed his meditation and accosted him with their suspicion. His reply was spontaneous and forthright. We are ascetics who have renounced the world. What enticement could wealth and ornaments hold for the like of us? When we don't even cover a square meal a day, why would we turn traitors to our own belief of non-accumulation and asthaya vrata non-staking? Although Sri Narayan Tirth was unmoved by the accusation, the soldiers refused to be dissuaded by his candid speech and searched him. But they were crestfallen when they found nothing on his person. There was no iota of doubt left about the innocence of Sri Narayan Tirth when the waters of the river receded. The bangle was discovered in the shallow riverbed near the bank. The royal family sought forgiveness of Sri Narayan Tirth. The king of Kashi heard that an innocent sannyasin had been harassed by the royal household. He was deeply disturbed. He felt that he had to seek personal forgiveness for his high-handedness of the royalty. Coming to the Panchaganga Ghat, he fell at the feel of Sri Narayan Tirth. We are ashamed of what has come to pass. 
Swamiji may kindly forgive us. The king prayed. Sri Narayan Tiat replied, O royal prince, in your kingdom Dharma and religiosity have always been given generous patronage. On this Panchaganga Ghat, Mother Ganga has turned the corner of her stream to become Ishinyaplava oriented towards the northeast. We belong to the Gaud Saraswat Brahman community from the distant land of Apparant, but we are deeply devoted to Mother Ganga in the holy land of Kashi. We desire that more and more people or our community should visit this sacred place to seek the darshan of Mother Ganga and bathe in the holy waters, so we intend to have mutt premises here. If Your Royal Highness takes active interest in this project, it would be a virtuous act of benevolence." The repentant king of Kashi was much relieved by the words of Sri Narayan Tirt. He helped the construction of a modest of a mutt premises on the very ghat facing Sri Bindu Madhav temple on the banks of the Ishunyaplava Ganga. Having ritually installed the Pancha idol of Sri Laxmi Narayan and having in it adequate arrangements for the daily puja of the deity. Sri Narayan Tirth Swamiji had established the Archmat in the Varanasi region, in the absence of any clear perception regarding the existing and ideal relations between the Mutt and the society. The primary objective behind the establishment of a Mutt would be solely to raise the banner of one sect in a leading place of pilgrimage and to provide a secure shelter to the pilgrims who venturing forth to remote lands in search of spiritual solace and benediction. Nonetheless his great venture had also launched a new tradition since. This was the initial Mutt of the Vishnav sect of Saraswat Brahmins. Having thus established the first mud at Kashi, Sri Narayan Tirth Swamiji returned to Udupi. After some time, the venerable Guru Sri Ramchandra Tirth Swamiji having recovered from his ailment believed to be incurable, also returned to his own mud. On seeing Sri Narayan Tirth, the Guruswami was puzzled. He was in two minds. The Dravid Brahmins wanted him to cancel the authority over the Pitha granted to Sri Narayan Tirth, while he himself was aware of the worth of the Bhatu who had served him so well during his pilgrimage and who having taken Diksha as his disciple had planted the banner of his glory in the holy region of Varanasi. As a way out, the revered Guru made Sri Vijanidhi Tirth as his successor and advised Sri Narayan Tirth to organize the Saraswat Brahman community and to create a separate Mutt tradition. Accordingly, Sri Narayan Tirth arrived at Batkal and having erected a mutt premises there began the spread of faith among the Saraswat community in the land of Parashuram. That was the beginning of the Sri Samsthan Gokhan Padagali Jivotam Mutt which is considered as the emblem of Saraswat identity and the rallying point for their unification. Devoted for over 530 years to preserve and organize a people forced to be disorganized and committed to serve and energize a community ordained to undergo many an ordeal by fate and compelled to be dispersed by history, the success story of the Mutt also contains the history of the Saraswat community. In this long march ahead, the Mutt has had the rare fortune of having an unhindered lineage of 23 Swamijis. The tiny sapling planted on the banks of El Shyanyaplava Ganga by H.H. Sri Narayan Tirth Swamiji and nurtured by this long unbroken tradition has today in the form of the holy mutt burgeoned like a mighty, banyan tree with its branches spread far and wide. Deities Main deities of Samsthan Gokana Matha Karaputhishta literally, a moving installation idols of Lord Sri Viravatala and Lord Sri Rama. Topic. Guru system Gokana math follows a guru system, wherein the head of the math appoints a shishya, who succeeds the guru. According to the math's tradition, the shishya should be unmarried, and is selected at a very young age. Sri Gokana math are followers of the Dwaita school of Vishnavite philosophy founded by Madhvacharya. Mathadapati The spiritual head, or the Mathadapati is the administrative head of the Math and its properties. As a Math specific to the Gaud Saraswat Brahmins, the Mathadhipathy seldom mingle with members of other communities. The Mathadhipathy is not a mere spiritual head of the community. In the past, the Mathadhipathy exercised powers over secular matters of the community too. The current Mathadhipathy of Sri Gokana Math Samsthan is H.H. Vidyadaraja Theatre Swami G. Vidyadaraja Theatre Swami G. Srimat Vidyadaraja Swami G. Porvashram name, Sri Raghavendra Acharya, native place, Ganguly, in the present Udupi district, 23rd in the pontifical lineage was given Sanyas Diksha on 26 February, 1967 in Sri Ram Mandir Vidala, Mumbai by his illustrious preceptor, Srimat Dwarakanath Tith Swami G., who brought Sri Gokhan Math to Mumbai as earlier there was no branch of the Math in the city. 
Sri Swamiji ascended to Gurupitha on 5 April 1973 and thereafter tirelessly working for the spiritual upliftment of the followers, the prime duty cast on the maths. Under his leadership quite a few old temples and math branches were renovated and rebuilt and Sri Swamiji revived in a big way the ancient most mode of worship by Yagas and Yajnas and also by undertaking pilgrimages to holy places, including the ones in the remote part of the Himalayas. In 1997, during Dasara in Sri Ram Mandir, Mumbai, in the year of Golden Jubilee of India's independence, for the welfare of the Indian nation in particular and humanity in general, Sri Swamiji organized a series of Mahayagnas when thousands from all over the country participated. Although a particular yajna is performed in a particular place, Sri Swamiji organizes in such a way that the young and the school-going tiny tots as well as the old can participate sitting in their own home. For instance, in 1997, for Koti. One crore Likata written Sri Rama Nama Japa Yajna, hundreds of notebooks in which thousands have chanted and written in their own handwriting the mantra, Sri Rama Jaya Rama Jaya Jaya Rama, arrived at the venue. The enthusiasm of the devotees was so great that as against the targeted one crore, 23 crore mantras arrived at the scene. This year, April, 2000 for the Mammoth Shatakoti 100 crores, 1 billion Sri Rama Nama Japa Yajna, organized in commemoration of the 525th Foundation Day of the Samsthan and Sri Swamiji's Silver Jubilee of ascending the Gurupitha, a devotee could chant any number at home, keep a daily record in a card supplied by the math and send it over to Padagali where the Yajna took place. Among all the Yajnas, Japa Yajna is the greatest. So declares Gita and Sri Swamiji actually propagates it by word and spirit. Among many pilgrimages Sri Swamiji has undertaken, the most difficult was virtually an expedition to Sri Damodar Kund in the Himalayas about 20,000 feet above the sea level. Some 500 years ago the third Swamiji of the Math, Srimat Jivotam Tith Swamiji by whose name the Math is called on account of his great many feats, had gone on a pilgrimage and Srimat Vidyataraj is the second one to repeat this in the year 1998 traversing and climbing the snow-clad peaks. The followers were deeply impressed by this accomplishment of their beloved guru and so they gave him the title of Abhanav new Jivotam Swamiji. This year Sri Swamiji is undertaking another difficult pilgrimage, from Gangorti, the source of Ganga to Gangasagar where Ganga meets the sea. Sri Swamiji is a great Sanskrit scholar and all the GSBs can be proud of his accomplishments. He has mastered all the books on Madhva philosophy, kavyas like Raghavamish, Kumar Sambhav, Karatajuni and Nasashad and also Jyotishya, Agama and Dramashastras. He likes self-study and is fond of linking auspicious moments and stars to all his religious programs. He is a lover of GSB history and culture and always states that Gota Saraswats are generous leaders with the spirit of service to all. Sri Swamiji has maintained a good two-way communication with Shishya Varga and also friendly ties with other Mathadhipatis. His greatest success is in making Sri Gokhan Math a vibrant and dynamic religious institution answering to the religious needs of the modern society especially popularizing that great mantra of mantras, Sri Rama Nama, taking it to every home and heart. Guru Parampara Samadhi, Verndavan According to a custom followed in the Gokana Math, after Swamiji passes away, the mortal remains of the departed Swamiji are buried in the earth after suitably embalming the body with preservatives, salt, camphor, heaps of tulsi leaves etc. Usually in the math premises or in temples associated with the math. Subsequently, a memorial structure is constructed over the site. The entire place is known as the Vrindavana or Samadhi of the Swamiji. Arrangements are made for the daily pujas in the Vrindavana and the Punya Tithi death anniversary of the Swamiji is duly celebrated with special pujas and prayers and abhishekam to the Hanuman idol for his blessing to the Matha Samsthan and its followers. <laughs> 